you go to business AS level chapter 19, role of enter an entrepreneur. When we talk about entrepreneur, we're talking about people who have who have taken the risk to set up a business or those who have a business idea and they want to make money out of it. What they want to make money out of it by working for themselves. So these are who we call entrepreneurs. So let's go down and see what they say about entrepreneurs. Creating and setting up a business. The role of entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are people who have a business as their idea and want to make money working for, them, working for themselves. They are the owners of a business and without them, the business will not exist. The role played by entrepreneurs in business is a small business. So we call them owners of business because they are the ones that have the idea. They come up with this idea and they make money out of the idea. So that means they're going to use all factors of production to create goods or services. That's right. So without them coming up with an idea, without them finding out the gap in the market, they won't be what we call production and we won't be able to consume too. So what are the roles of entrepreneurs? Number one, entrepreneurs are innovators because they try to make money out of the business idea. So we call them innovators. Why do we call them innovators? We call them innovators because they come up with an idea, they find out the gap in the market and they make money out of such ideas. That's the first one. The second one. Entrepreneurs are responsible for organizing other factors of production. So also, we have they are the owners of factors of production. So they are the ones that coordinate land, labor, and capital. So without them, we don't have other factors of production. I know what factors of production are. These are resources that need, that helps in the production of goods and services. So without entrepreneurs, without them trying to produce a good or provide the service, we won't be talking about other factors of production. So that's the second role they perform. They are, they are the organizers and controllers of other factors of production. The third one is that since entrepreneurs are the owners, they have to make all key, the key decisions. They make decisions on how to raise finance, product design, choice of production method, prices, recruitment, and wages. Since they are the owners of the business, so decisions that are regarding financial, human resources, Whatever decision they have, whatever strategic decision that the business will need has to come from there. That's why they are the owners of the business. And lastly, entrepreneurs are risk takers. Why do we call them risk takers? They are risk takers because they might lose all the any money they put into the business and place the business if the business fails. And however, if the business also succeeds, the reward for them is profit. So these are what the rules of entrepreneurs are. They will go to risk and rewards for entrepreneurs. So we'll go to risk and rewards for entrepreneurs. For risk and rewards, what we're talking about is this. Entrepreneurs, because they are the owners of the business, uh, they have tried to, you know, they put money into the business. So they always find, you know, there's always a reason for a return on investment. So the more risk they put into the business, the more pro or the more rewarding it would be. So let's read anyway. They said, uh, however, okay, let's see. Some entrepreneurs like Richard Branson, Stelios, have become rich through developing their own business. Starting a new business also have, offer a chance for many people to do something different. If not, it means working for yourself rather than for someone else. However, being an entrepreneur is risky. It's, the downside of success is business failure. If the business fails, it may leave debt to be paid off. The entrepreneur might have borrowed money to start a business or to finance growth. Getting back into a normal job may also be difficult, especially if the, if the entrepreneur left a well-paid job to set up the, their business. The risk of failure is a major motivator for entrepreneurs to carry on and make the success of their enterprise, even when faced with challenges. Success and failure have an opportunity cost. The opportunity cost of an activity is the benefit lost from the next best alternative. So, part of the opportunity cost of setting up a business would then be okay. So, basically, what we're talking about this time, what is this? Entrepreneurs, when they put, like, it, there's always an opportunity cost between success and failure. Why? Because if the if the entrepreneur starts this business, the opportunity cost is the employment opportunity that you, or the job that you would have lost or the employment opportunity or benefits that you would have gotten if he's working for if he or she is working for someone. So the opportunity because of starting your own business so for becoming an entrepreneur is that the, you won't be able to get uh, paid or benefit or employment benefits as working for employees, as working for an employer. Then it could be satisfiable if at the end of it, your business succeeds. So you won't think about the opportunity cost. But the problem lies now, the problem now lies in an unsuccessful entrepreneur. An unsuccessful entrepreneur will have a higher cost of or will have a higher opportunity cost. Why? Because the business has failed, he might not be able to get a new job, and all the money he has put into the business has already gone to. So an unsuccessful entrepreneur will have a higher 
risk than a successful entrepreneur, or will have a higher opportunity cost than a successful entrepreneur. So the more risk you put into the business, the more profit, the more reward that you could come with it. So the less risk, the less reward. That is what an entrepreneur is. So that is about risk and reward. Risk is part of it, and it is rewarding when the business succeeds. Thank you. So we'll go to entrepreneurs and business ideas. We'll continue, we'll go to entrepreneurs and business ideas. Each year, hundreds of thousands of people set themselves up in business. In business, instead of working for someone else, they become the owner or they move from own, owning one business to owning another business. If they are successful, they may start to own and set up a string of businesses. But how do most would be entrepreneurs? How would how do most would be entrepreneurs find the business idea? There are numbers of ways in which they use in finding business ideas. So we want to go to ways in which entrepreneurs find business ideas. So, entrepreneurs and business ideas. So, how do entrepreneurs come up with business ideas? Number one, business experience. For most people, starting a small business, the business idea comes from their existing job. A plumber might work for a plumbing company and decide to set up on her own. So, one of the ways in which entrepreneurs find their business idea is working for people. So, they, they've gathered the experience because they have worked in a company and because they are working in that company, they, they, they get to know more about the company and they set up their own business from there. So that is business experience. Two, personal experience. Some people, that's the second point. Some people draw on their personal experience outside of work to find the business idea. Some plan it all be into a job. So when you talk about personal experience, this is out of work. Some people do some extra things outside business or outside their work, work life. So those things that they do outside, outside their work life, they might turn it to become a business. That's another way in which an entrepreneur could you know, come up with a business idea. The third one, skills. So entrepreneurs draw on their broad skills based on to start a broad skills base to start a business. A person with an administration job might judge that they have good people skills and decide to set up a business in selling. A plumber might judge that in his area, an electrician can charge more their, on their work. So basically, when you talk about skills, that means what you have developed, what you know how to do, you can create a business out of it. That is skills. The next way in which an entrepreneur can Come up with a business idea is the lifestyle choices. So the, you know, some business area attracts people who want to make a lifestyle change. They might want to move to the country and invest in small holding. They might also have always have wanted to run a caravan site, so they, they buy a caravan site. So basically, we want to talk about lifestyle choices. Some people have some interest outside their work life, right? They what they really want to do maybe after retirement. So what that lifestyle choice is about, they might put it into you know becoming a business after their retirement. So that's about how entrepreneurs come up with business ideas. So we'll go to stages and set, that is how entrepreneurs come up with business ideas. So we we'll go to stages in setting up a business. So setting up a business, the first thing you need in setting up a business is a business idea. So when we talk about idea, basically it means you cannot start, you can't even start it up a business or you can't be an entrepreneur without having a business idea. So the sort of, your idea is what that means you've created a gap, you seen, you find a gap in the market, then you're, you're using your initiative to understand how it will work. That is what you are making a business out of. That is a business idea. So how do entrepreneurs, what are the source of their business idea? Number one, they use research. I want to talk about research. So the first thing you do after, the, the source of ideas are discussed. Okay, so first, we understand that there's need for idea. That means whatever we want to do, we need an initiative for it. As soon as that is done, the next stage is about making a research. Oh, I want to I want to produce product A. That is the business idea. So the next thing you need to do is make a research about product A. What are what what are the things you need for product A? What are competitors uh, what are competitors' strengths regarding the same products, which is the same as product A? So you need to understand. The customer's behavior, what are customers saying about the product? What are competitors? What are your competitors? What ideas do competitors come up with regarding the product? That is about research. So research is about gathering information about the product and getting the feedback, which you can make a business out of. As soon as research is done, the next thing should be planning. You know, planning is about putting things in order. And if you know, you know what they used to say, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Planning will allow you, you know, it's, it's a very important stage in, uh, in entrepreneurship. So it's a stage where you have to put all things together and, you know, set a target for yourself. Then as soon as planning is done, the next stage is financing. 
which is also important for finance. They say, oh, entrepreneurs will provide some of the money there to set up for business. Finance will also be when the business is up and running. Entrepreneurs have to decide how much finance they will need, which sources they will use to obtain this, and the rest. So finance is important also when you're setting up a business because without finance, you can't continue to run the business. So it is important you set a budget. There's a plan. So there's going to be a financial plan. So financial plan is part of your plan. It's part of your financing too. So as soon as you have a business, as soon as you have a business idea, you gather information through market research. The next thing is plan on how to execute the project. After that, the, the budget for the project has to be done. Then the next thing is the location of the business. Where do you want the business to be located? Because location is also important. This is where your contacts will be. This is where customers will come. This is where you get your supplies. So location is also important. And it depends on the nature of the business. So these are the stages of, these are things you have to, these are the stages in setting up a business. You create an idea. As soon as an idea is done, you make a plan. You make a, or you make a plan. As soon as you, you make an idea, as soon as the idea is done, you make a research about the idea, which is the project. Then you make a plan. As soon as your plan is done, you need to make a, you need to make a financial plan also, which is financing or budgeting. Then you need to locate, you need to find a location where the business will be situated. And as soon as that is done, you now you start looking for the resources that will help you for that product or for the service, maybe labor or raw materials and the rest. And as soon as that is done, the next stage is launching. And launching means you are ready, the business has been started. You are ready to sell, you are ready to go. Although the information above, so although they say the information above suggests that setting up a business is unorganized and systematically will help to reduce the risk of failure. Some entrepreneurs may omit may, many of these stages and set up anyway. So basically, you need all these stages to set up a business. But it does not mean that some, some stages cannot be skipped. You know, it depends on the kind of business you're doing, depends on the kind of mindset you have. But basically, when you make a set, when you set, when you make a plan regarding setting up a business, it reduces the risk of failure. That is the point about business ideas and setting up a business. I think it's better. They will go on to running, running and expanding a business. Running and expanding, develop, running and expanding or developing a business. After the launch, entrepreneurs become engaged in the day-to-day -day running of the business. For many, this involves working in production or delivering a particular service. So, what we're talking about is as soon as the business succeeds, so it is important for entrepreneurs to expand or develop their business. And to do this, what are those things they need to do? So, their roles, their activity would change. So now they will take on different roles aside the normal roles that they used to take. So yes, however, running a business requires owners to undertake a range of other tasks that are crucial to the success of the business. As the business expands and develops, more and more time will be spent attending to these functional business activities. So there are different functional business activities that entrepreneurs will take as soon as their business expands or as soon as they try to expand their business. The first one is financial management. I'm going to talk about financial management. This, uh, the business needs enough money to fund its expansion or its operation. So this might require producing cash flow forecasts, arranging loans and overdraft, making payments, chasing debts, and monitoring cash movement into and out of the business. So one of the roles entrepreneurs will take, uh, one of the functional activity an entrepreneur will take is the financial management. And when we talk about financial management, we talk about how fund, how the business will be funded, how cash, you know, how cash will come in and how will go in, will come in and go out of the business, chasing your debts, finding, making sure that your customer, your credit customers make payments making sure you also pay your credit supplier. So all these are financial management. Without finance, it becomes difficult for the business to continue to run. They will go to administration. For administration, this involves keeping records and keeping track of the financial, uh, keeping track of record, keeping, keeping track of record and making sure that transactions are also kept. The records of transactions are kept because these are what will be used in paying your liabilities and paying your taxes and declaring your profits. That is about administration, keeping records. The next functional, uh, the functional, another functional activity is marketing. Initially, depending on the nature of the business, marketing might involve obtaining an online business listing, developing an attractive website, using an email campaign, using an email campaign, distributing leaflets, and so on. So basically, what they are saying here is that it is important for an entrepreneur as soon as it's expanding its business. It needs to do some marketing, like attracting more customers, coming up with you know different ways in which customers will be will be aware that the business is moving further. And this can also be done by you know 
understanding the kind of business or uh, distribution channels that needs to be used and making use of business or social media. So this is all about marketing. Then the next stage would be uh, the next functional activity could be purchasing. As soon as business increases or expands, it needs more resources, it needs more raw materials. And that means the business must ensure that it has a good relationship with its suppliers. That means, that means it needs to find an effective supply chain so that customers will not be waiting because customers waiting might be disappointed. Managing people. Some entrepreneurs run their business independently without the help of others. However, if a business is successful, it probably needs staff to help us. This will involve spending time on recruitment, selection, training, and so training. Entrepreneurs may need to develop skills and managing people and motivating staff. So the next functional activity that entrepreneur could pick is managing the people. You know, people are people need to be managed, and you know, the more as soon as the business expands, that means it needs more workers, it needs more staff to run the business, to run the operations. So here, yeah, it needs to understand, and this entrepreneur must develop a skill that will allow him or her to manage people and motivate its workers. Because if they are not motivated and not managed well, they will, their productivity will reduce and it will not be helpful for the company. Then the next day, the last one is production itself. Production means providing goods and services. So this involves ensuring that raw materials are delivered as a joint deal and goods are always ready to be sold. That's about production, which is also another function. So that ends up, that ends that. So we're going to intrapreneurship. So the next stage, the next, next thing we go to into is intrapreneurship. We're talking about intrapreneurship. We're talking about employees who have entrepreneurial skills and they try to develop, they try to develop business initiatives that would help. The business. So what they do is they are employees and they try to ensure that they, use, they come up with business ideas that will be beneficial to the company. That's why we call them intrapreneurs. So let's read. Entrepreneurs are business owners and use their own personal finance when developing a business, business idea. For entrepreneurs, they are employees, usually in large businesses, who use entrepreneurial skills to find and develop initiatives that will have financial benefits for their companies. This might be new product, service, or system. However, unlike entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs carry no financial risk. If the initiatives fail, the employer should show that as a financial body. So we call them intrapreneurs because yes, they come up with entrepreneurial skills. They use entrepreneurial skills. They come up with business ideas, business initiatives. But why they are intrapreneurs is because they do not, they do not have any financial body. So if the business fails, it is not on their shoulder. It's the owner of the business takes the sole responsibility of their failure. That's why we call them intrapreneurs. So we go down to the advantages of employing entrepreneurial staff. One, what are the advantages of uh, employing entrepreneurial staff? Or advantages of uh, encouraging entrepreneurship. One, entrepreneurs can drive innovation in the business and uncover new commercial opportunities. This can help a business gain a competitive edge and increase profit significantly. In some cases, discoveries and inventions made by entrepreneurs can have a huge positive impact on the business. So one of the advantages of Having entrepreneur or encouraging entrepreneur is that it gives the business the opportunity to for innovation. And when we talk about innovation, basically we're talking about allowing the business to you know to think as if there is no box. So with this business, with these entrepreneurs that don't have you know they don't have to, to show that responsibility in terms of the risk they take. So it gives them you know the free mind to come out with come up with business ideas that might be useful for the business. So. Two, it means it is a means of satisfying the self-actualization needs of employees. Self-actualization is the highest. Is the highest level of need according to Maslow's hierarchy. Hierarchy of need. So if staff adopt this role, they are being given the opportunity to be creative and reach their full potential. This will help to motivate staff and hopefully raise their productivity. Another advantage about intrapreneurship is that it gives staff member, it gives workers the opportunity, you know, to explore. And it means that they might be able to self-actualize. It means they can be the best version of themselves. The third stage, a number of hours might be won by the business. So the business might basically be ahead of its competitors if it allows entrepreneurship. And lastly, individuals benefit by getting the opportunity to experiment and creative, be creative without having to meet the cost of failure. So this means that employees will be able to be creative without the need to, you know, without the need to 
without losing their money or anything because they know they have they have they will be encouraged to do it because they know that whatever happens to the business is not going to be their own responsibility so that's about entrepreneurship so we we'll go to barriers to entrepreneurship what are the reasons why people are discouraged to become an entrepreneur so one lack of finance some people with a good business idea do not start trading because they cannot attract the necessary finance. The main problem is that the fire of capital and loan may be reluctant to lend money to entrepreneurs. This is because the failure rate can be high for new businesses. So one of the reasons why people find it difficult or they are discouraged about becoming an entrepreneur is that they lack the financial capability. And lenders see them as high risk. As a result, they don't want to give them money. And this makes them to, you know, to fail. This makes their idea about setting up a business collapse. Two, so, lack of entrepreneurial capacity. Entrepreneurial capacity. To be successful in business, people have to be equipped with necessary entrepreneurial skills and characteristics. So basically, when we talk about entrepreneurial capacity, we're talking about skills needed by entrepreneurs. So not only skills, even your characteristics. Without having the characteristics of entrepreneurs, it becomes difficult to run a business. So entrepreneurs need these skills and characteristics to really run a business. That was the second one. The third one, becoming an, empl an employer. Becoming an employer means you need to start training employees. Becoming an employer means you start paying employees. And paying employees basically means you have to pay them salary. You have to think about health and safety. You have to think about training them. All these are expensive. As a result, it becomes difficult for entrepreneurs. Some people, like, they feel the responsibility of paying a lot of workers, it's high. So as a result of that, they just don't want to become an entrepreneur. Can't pay the next one is legal barriers, the red tape. You know, the red tape is, not, is what you cannot cross. You must not cross it. So some people, because of the legislation, I really uh, we say about from government, a lot of documentation needed to set up a business. As a result, they get discouraged about setting up a business. The next stage, uh, the, another reason why people do not want to become entrepreneurs is lack of ideas. Ideas are needed. So if you cannot come up with an, a business idea, then it becomes difficult for you. You need an original idea. So if you cannot find a business idea, then it becomes difficult. So it means you need to copy other people's idea, which is not part of the spirit of enterprise. So you need your own business idea and make a business out of it. If not, it becomes difficult to set up a business. Fear of failure. Some people, they are scared to fail. As a result, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to take that risk to become an entrepreneur. Aversion to risk. Entrepreneurs have to take risks, but many people are risk averse and they're not inclined to undertake activities where the outcome is uncertain. So some people, they have this psychological barrier. They, they just don't, they don't, they feel, they have, the, uh, they have, they have, they have a phobia for taking risks. So they just don't want to do it. They want to only invest in things that would give them, uh, that they know the start, that it's starting to make more money from. But they don't want to take that risk. Corrupt and non-supportive environments. When we talk about corrupt and non-supportive environment, basically we talk about the government of the country. The government of the country, if the government of the country is not encouraging entrepreneurship, so government officials may, may you know, take different long processes because they need to be bribed before a document flies or before they stamp or they, before they say yes to a document. This also discourages entrepreneurship, especially in developing countries where bribery and corruption is rampant. So these are the reasons why some people will not become an entrepreneur or these are the barriers of entrepreneurship. So go to anticipating risk and uncertainty. 